This is about the level of interest for this uh, topic that I should expect. Um, yeah, this is one of the most boringest topics I've ever given a talk on, so I try to make it as fun as possible. Um, right, let's see, this is my little slide thing. Door? Does that stay open? Or? I wasn't paying attention, I'll be honest. Why are those two clocks different? They're a minute apart. They should be synced. Hmm? All right, it's been more than a minute. Why is that? It's the time zone. Mountain time. It's the extra two minutes you got to have with elevation. West Asheville time. Well, it's like when I got here Friday, I'm like, I'm hungry. So like, let me look at a restaurant. Oh, eight minute walk. I forgot y'all have elevation here. It's not a thing that I'm accustomed to. Um, yeah, yeah. No, every, one of the highest points in our state is a landfill. Mount Trashmore. It's above Miami. But uh, yeah, we'll get started. So let's see. There we go. <coughs> Hi, everybody. Can everybody hear me okay? I probably don't even, I don't even think I turned that on. Good. All right. So we're going to talk about GDPR today. And let's just jump right in. There's the button. There we go. So that's me. That's kind of what I look like. That's where I live. That's where I work. Uh, as far as Twitter goes, it still technically exists, but the whole, they can't seem to get their white supremacy under control, so I'm not really there. And what we're going to do is actually I want to jump back real quick and point out two things. One, the title, and two, the lack of letters after my last name. And I want to say that because in no way, shape, or form is this legal advice. This is not anything that you should go. <laughs> you all know the disclaimers, however, I need to say them. If you have any questions or concerns about any of this stuff, talk to your counsel, you know, whatever you may have, and figure out how it applies. That said, so what the hell is GDPR? Who here knows anything about it other than its name? Okay, who here understands anything about it other than its name? That's actually the most that I've seen in the year that I've done this. <laughs> I figured I'd retire this talk, but everyone keeps needing to hear it because it's still relevant. So let's just jump in. It's one of the most vague titles I've ever heard. That could mean anything. So that is technically what it means, but let's see. That's the word we care about. That is really all we care about. Nothing else about GDPR matters. Data is the only thing that's concerned. And in particular, the way the EU defines it, and we're going to get into the, more of that a little bit later, is information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person. Again, vague on purpose, and there's a reason for that. And money, that's why. This is what it's actually all about, and this is why data matters. So I'm going to, a little side note, a little story here. Let's, uh, let's have a seat. So, in, I didn't go to a college that had Facebook. So I didn't get on there early. By the time I could actually get on there, I wasn't really invested. The first uh, privacy uh, bug that Facebook had, that's a feature, but um, <laughs> I was like, I don't care about this, I deleted it. Like I got rid of Facebook, and this is when you theoretically could delete a Facebook account. Like it said two weeks or whatever, so I did it. I didn't think twice about it. A couple years later, I had to make a fake account for doing uh, web work, and I, it was a fake name and all that other stuff. And then at some point, I reached where like you needed a Facebook to log into certain stuff. It was just you couldn't not have one anymore. So I made one totally private. You know, again, like I didn't want to be on that. It would not let me use the email address that I'd used on the first account that I deleted 10 years prior, even though it was deleted. I don't know how much Facebook has on me. Um, because for some of you, you were here when the internet started. A bunch of white guys from Silicon Valley basically wanted to connect the world and all this other lofty bullshit. And, and they may have even believed it. Like, it, I'm not necessarily, you know, I think at the time they actually thought this was going to happen. The problem is, is they forgot everything about human nature. And basically they said, trust us. And we did. And that was a terrible idea. Like, I cannot emphasize how badly of an idea it was to just give everybody everything they know about us and not ask why, and not say another word about it. So let's get into some actual numbers. 
This first one, and I have the links for where all these came from, but uh, that means nothing because I cannot imagine the 8% that don't, unless they're maybe off the grid. So like, all right, that, that means nothing. Okay, this, we're getting better. 30, uh, frankly, the number seems high to me, but yeah. all right, we say 30, you know, they understand, great, okay. That one. 74% of people have limited their online activity because they're scared of privacy. That's three-fourths. We build websites because we want people to come to them. Whether you're selling stuff, writing stuff, talking about stuff, show, whatever it is you're doing, you want people there, otherwise you wouldn't be building the site to begin with. So we have 74% of people that are not doing the internet in some capacity because they're afraid of what might happen. That's kind of a big deal. <laughs> so let's start in the beginning. What have we already done? Because rarely do you reach a point where nothing has been done. All right, quick, what do all these companies have in common? Big data breaches, big ones. So we had eBay, 145 million uh, users. Target, 110 million. JP Morgan Chase, 83 million. Uber, 57 million, along with 600,000 drivers, which has way more information. Uh, Anthem, which is a medical uh, insurance management or something like that, 80 million. Equifax, we all remember that one, 143 million, and that was all our stuff. And Yahoo with 3 billion. Nothing happened to any of these companies at all. So the EU comes in, and they're like, this is a problem. And the EU, and, and above and beyond everything else, and we'll get to this again in a little bit, the EU views privacy wholesale different than the United States says. And in no way is this meant to be political, but the US does not believe in privacy, period. Like, they can say it, but everything they do is against it. The EU has a different fundamental idea of what privacy means. Like, they put users, we don't. So again, I'm not a lawyer. There was another law that was in place, but it was not good enough, and the EU felt something had to be done. This is a big thing. Users now have rights to their data that they never had before. It's a big one. There's three things. And again, this is the biggest thing that people have a problem with, is the idea of some, someone having rights for, in, for something intangible like data that they never had before. But, so there's three main rights. The first off is the right to be informed. That means, A, that everyone has a right to know what information they have about you. You have to be able to see it. You have to know when it happens. If they have a breach or data thing, you have to be told by them very quickly. And the second one is you have a right to all the information that a site has on you at will. If you want it, you have to ask for it, and I believe there might be like a short like a couple, however many the time, because there's a 30 day limit to delete stuff, but it may be 30 days, you have to provide it. And it has to be in what they call a human readable format, which again is vague, because depending on the data is how it would be readable. But you can't just like give them a SQL dump and be like, here you go. <laughs> yeah, you, know, like you have to give them something that a non-developer, someone who doesn't understand that could read it and be like, okay, this is what you have. And the third one's a big one, because this is the one that we still don't really understand how to deal with and it was the right to be forgotten. And like I said, the Facebook stuff. I thought I had been forgotten. <laughs> Apparently I was not, because I could not use my email address, which is my own name, to open up an account 10 years later. So that's the big deal. The data isn't yours. It's just not yours anymore. The easiest idea is just it does not belong to you. At the best case scenario, you're leasing it. And most likely, you're just getting to look at it. And that's fine, because it never really belonged to you to begin with. Like, big data, more or less, we, we agree is a joke. Kind of like cloud is just a server in somebody else's building. Like, big data is just more data. And we never bothered to validate any of this data. We never looked to see if it was accurate, or correct, or even usable. We just kept collecting more and more and more. Speaking for myself, when I would build sites, I would collect as much as I could because I didn't know what data they were going to need and when they were going to need it, but that when they would need it, it would have to be historical. So I'm like, yeah, let's let me start collecting everything. That is no longer the case. So who here thinks this doesn't yet apply to them? Good, because it does. Um, some of you may not, but almost everybody here it does. Because um, remember VAT? Remember how we all cared about that and then nobody cares about that? Yeah, a lot of people thought this was the same thing, and it's not the case. So. Does anybody know who this guy is? Nobody should. His name is James Lang. 
I don't know if I pronounced his last name right. Uh, he's an engineer for Volkswagen. Does everyone remember how Volkswagen got busted uh, cheating the emissions testing stuff? Yeah. He was one of the developers. He's currently serving time in federal prison. He was not the lead developer. He was not the CTO. He was not, according to the, the judge, he was not the mastermind. He worked for Volkswagen, and he's serving time because he wrote code. So this applies to us. Like, we can't just, yeah, you know, the whole I was just doing my job is not a viable excuse. <laughs> so maybe I've got somebody's attention, and the question becomes, what do you do now? It's like, now, like, great, and now I'm worried. What do I do? Um, well, first off, don't be worried, but let's start with the easiest question. What is personal data? Because I don't think we actually know anymore. So this is how the EU defines personal data, and notice how they get pretty, pretty big. And the EU, again, does it differently. The EU says as information relating to the natural, you know, whereas the US is personally identifiable information. They sound like the same words. Difference being in the US, your email address is your name. That's identifiable. An IP address is not your name. That's not identifiable. The EU understands aggregation. They understand that each of these individual pieces may or may not be relevant, but when they put all together, it makes a very big picture of who you are as a person and what you do online. Like, if you want to get really creeped out, Google Facebook shadow profiles. Yeah. So, now, little, all right, racial or ethnic, I don't store any of that information. Uh, political opinions, comments, maybe blog posts, but okay, still nothing really crazy. Same with religious, trade unions, uh, US hate unions too, um, health data. Sure, orientations, you know, criminal stuff. Again, most of this stuff is things like, I don't want to know about anybody. Like, I'd be happy not knowing this about most of my friends. Um, <laughs> but they get even deeper. So we're like, all right, genetic data. Again, I'm not even sure how I would store that information. Same with biometrics. OK, maybe key, you know, key fobs or, or whatever. But location, oh, all right, we start to do that. Pseudomized data. You can't just change someone's first name. And the last one here, this online identifiers. That is, again, a very vague term because they want it to be. Because so many things can be considered an online identifier. So they wrote this law to cover the technology that hasn't been invented yet. For example, and a little side note, voice search, Alexa, all that, did not exist when they, write, when they started writing GDPR. The law accounts for it already. They didn't make it so rigid that it basically created loopholes. They tried to cover everything. And they're still writing it, they eh, did a pretty good job. So this is what some identifiers would be. How many of these are in the WordPress user table right now? At least two. Depending on how you store meta, could be more. Just in the user table. Exactly. Yeah. So like, we're already doing this. So if you have comments, you sell stuff, and in addition to this, you got emails, you have avatars. You've got a whole slew of stuff that, again, everything pieced together can figure out. Like the whole thing, oh, I was talking to a friend of mine, and now I saw a Facebook ad. They're not listening to you. We're just that predictable, and we give them that much information that they can actually make an accurate picture of who we are and what we like. It's creepy at times. But, so yeah, so this applies to everybody who does any sort of business with the EU. And yes, this literally applies to everybody in the EU. All businesses, all sectors, all organizations, regardless of size, scenario, profit or not, does not matter. If, there's, if you have data, this applies to you. Now, I've gotten this question a couple times where they're like, oh, well, I just won't sell the EU. Can anybody here name every country in the EU? <laughs> Neither can I. Second of all, I, we're sort of familiar with proxies, VPNs. Good luck identifying who is actually in the EU. You can't, period. And you can't, also what you cannot do is have a button. Like remember the whole like, yes, I'm 18. Um, you can't do that. You cannot ask somebody to opt out of a law. Legally, you cannot say, no, this law, I don't care about your, you know, you can't do it. So yeah, good luck trying to get around it. Like it's easier to just deal with it than get around it. So basically, everything involving GDPR falls under two baskets. You have your data controllers, and those are the people that they decide what to collect, where and how it is used, 
and whom it is shared with. The other part is the processor, and that's whatever they do with it. And if you're questioning which one am I, probably both. Google Analytics is a processor. You're collecting data, you're also passing it on. So Google is re responsible for the data they hold. That's not your problem. But you have to tell people you have Google Analytics, that kind of stuff. So the whole idea is privacy by design, which we've never really done. We have always kind of bolted that stuff on the end. And we've heard enough security talks in the last two years where you're like, you have to think about security first, not last. Privacy is the exact same way. You cannot just bolt it on at the end. You will miss something. <laughs> um, and this thing actually here is not just like a cool phrase. Like it's a literal design methodology, a seven point development methodology that's been written down and established and you can follow. <laughs> and then this is the thing. You need to know everything about the site that you are managing. You cannot pretend that you just don't know. It's not a viable thing anymore. You need to know what you're collecting. You need to know where you're putting it. You need to know who can see it, because that's a big thing. Is everything, like it's, you can't just pretend that stuff isn't, you know, you don't know about it anymore. So this is a now legal requirement in the EU. This is a real document that you have to create. Privacy impact statement, again, more cool vague words. Um, but basically anything they call data intensive, which if you have a database, you're data intensive. It's not a line from there. Like if there's data, it's probably intensive. And frankly, I wouldn't want to choose that one wrong <laughs> if I'm in court. So basically you have to have everything documented, what data might be questionable, what data could be a problem, who can access it, when can they access it, how can they access it. All of this has to be literally written down available to everybody who is involved with the project, including regulators who can ask at any moment. And you have to provide it to them. So again, this isn't a do this before launch. This is a write this before you start. And again, it's not that difficult. You just figure out, okay, what am I collecting? And that's where you have the conversations with people because, all right, who here is in marketing? All right, I'm gonna you know, un unintentionally make fun of you. Um, yeah, and like I listen to a lot of Bill, I'm like, you listen to Bill Hicks, you know the jokes. Um, so the big thing is this is still evolving. This is not a static or done thing. Like I said, the voice search, like they had integrated that without actually having to say voice search, but I'm sure that we're gonna invent something that they didn't think about yet. That's kind of how progress works. So they're still writing this stuff down. They're still working through some of it. Uh, there's the a privacy directive in 2002, they called it the cookie law, which was a terrible name, but it was, they're building on top of that. Uh, England has said they already have the same GDPR law in place if they actually go through with Brexit. So that will still apply even if Britain is no longer in the EU. So like, again, we're not getting away with it. Um, so this is the good part. Like, all right, what's enforced? Because again, I've never heard of anybody getting a VAT penalty, ever. And yes, absolutely yes it is. Uh, the law has been in place for about a year now. I think it was May was the one year anniversary. So in January, uh, France fine, and the countries get to fine, not the EU. So it's like France uh, fined Google $57 million in January, which again, for Google's not that much money. Um, and I think it's Euro, so I guess that's why I don't know, I remember what real money is. But um, so you think, like, okay, Google got a penalty, like great, cool. But like, I'm not Google. <laughs> they're not gonna notice me. Um, yeah, no, they're actually gonna notice you too. The uh, first fine they ever gave out was for an obscure German uh, social network that, like the fine was like 30,000 euro, which seems, I don't know if that was a lot or not for that company, but it was a company I've never heard of, like some weird social network that was only in Germany. They did everything right. They did not have anything in plain text. They had everything written down. They had a breach. They notified their users immediately. They cut everything off, they did everything right, and they got a fine because they still had the breach. They still didn't do everything they were supposed to do. That's the thing, it's like, yeah, you can't stop everything, but the less that you collect. So that's the first part. Ignorance is in no way an excuse. They don't care. Last time I checked, courts do not care if you knew what the law was in any way, shape, or form, regardless of the law. Um, so yeah, you can't pretend, oh, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about that. They're like, well, who's in charge? You are. Oh, well, then you should know. And yeah, it's, it's more work. And the second part is this, is privacy. Again, like I said earlier, the US does not actually believe in privacy. We like the idea of it, but we don't actually like the implementation. Um, 
you have to care about privacy now. You have to care about privacy of people you've never met, you likely will never meet, and you very well may not even care about or like, depending on the kind of site you're running. They could be a troll, and you still have to care about their privacy, which is a weird feeling, but it's actually the right one because, again, they go back to the idea of having rights, and it's very, very easy. So there's something else I'm going to get to before that, so hold on, let me, let me, there's buttons. Wait, shit. Anyway, all right, well, we'll get to that in a second, but so in terms, a couple of easy, quick things, like number one, you cannot auto-check any boxes ever, anymore, period. You cannot automatically say, yes, I want to hear more about your products. They have to opt in. You cannot opt in people to new things because they've opted in to old things. If you have a new thing, they need to opt in to the new thing. They get to opt out at any point for any reason, and it cannot have anything to, you know, you can't be like, oh, you don't want my newsletter? You can't be on my site anymore. That's a weird issue. They haven't decided whether or not that's actually allowed. Like, you can pull stuff away if they're not. But yeah, it's like, if you don't want me, then go away. Um, so yeah, the biggest thing is stop collecting data. That sounds weird to us. I know it sounded incredibly weird to me, but Think of how much data you've collected on users and never looked at again. I'd say, at least from my own experience, from my stuff that I have built, about at least 80% I have never looked at a first time. I wrote the code to collect it, I tested that it worked, and I never looked at it again. I had an uh, analytics thing on my own site years ago. It was uh, called Pickwick. I think they changed the name of it recently. It was like an open source thing. You run it yourself, whatever. Um, I forgot about it. <laughs> I haven't touched my site in like five years. but. I forgot it was there. I only knew about it because I got an email when they changed their name. And I was like, I deleted the script and I deleted the database of information. So now I'm not liable anymore because the information no longer exists. That's, you know, don't keep what you don't need. Marketing will tell you that they need all of it, usually. They're not right. In this case, they are not right. Because that information is, again, we never said if it was clean, we never said if it was valid, we never said if it was useful. Like the reason marketing makes up metrics is because there's no way to do it otherwise. Like I used to make fun of them for doing it, but then I realized there's no other metric to give. So they'll just make a new metric. But have a conversation with everybody involved because yeah, marketing's gonna care. That's how they do their job. So you'd be like, what do you need? Not what do you want. What would be nice to have, but what information do you need to do your job marketing? Start there. Then find out what they might want and see if it's something that A, you even want to collect and B, you feel comfortable holding on to. Because that's the big thing is that once you hold it, you have, you're holding it. Like it's now on you. If you don't need it, don't keep it. I wrote a plugin, actually, I gave this talk in Atlanta, and afterwards I wrote a plugin because I was having a conversation with Dwayne at uh, Pantheon that will automatically scrub the uh, IP address from the comment table. Every time someone leaves a comment, it'll replace it with 127.0.0.1. Because I'm like, I don't care about anybody's IP address anymore. That used to be valid when people would like leave a bunch of comments under different names, but you'd find the same IP. Now trolls know how VPNs work, so it's like, that's not even valid anymore. So I don't want the data anymore. If you don't need it, get rid of it. You don't have to hold on to this stuff simply because it exists. If, the thing about how many times you hear about someone left a, a AWS server unencrypted and they pulled all this data because it was just sitting there and someone found it. <laughs> yeah, like that's the kind of stuff that I'll do. Like I'm not gonna make something, you know, it's like I'll put something on an S3 or a server somewhere and just forget about it. I've forgotten my own birthday more than once as an adult. I'll forget about that. And that's the stuff where it's like, oh, now I'm in trouble. And now it's like old, yeah, did I secure it? I don't know, I didn't know it was there. Um, I get $5 bills from a bunch of hosts and I just hit okay. <laughs> so I don't even know. It's like, just sit down and figure out what you have because it's very easy, especially if you're freelancing or working in an agency where it's like, what's the next project? What do I need to do next? This is done, cool, I don't have to think about it anymore, what's next? If you do the privacy work in the beginning, it's part of the process, so when you're done, you're still done. You don't have to go back and figure out how to now back into proper user privacy. It's very easy to build privacy. It's very hard to implement after the fact. Just like everything else we build, you really wish you knew about it sooner. Like that one client, like, oh, by the way, we would like this. And it's like, well, that sounds great. Oh, unfortunately, that's totally counter to everything else we built for you. <laughs> have a conversation in the beginning. 
Now, has anybody else ever had to deal with this with their clients, customers, whatever? And what is the biggest pushback? And I, this is for me as much as for you. What is the biggest pushback you've had from people? I mean, so the challenge for me was I had two different clients who reacted to GDPR completely differently. One removed all tracking from everything. And one said they thought they found a loophole. And, I love Americans for that. Right, again, like you, to the chagrin of my mother, I did not attend law school. My, so, my son. As, but as a marketing consultant, I was trying to say, I don't think that's what the law means. I don't think the law means you must remove Google Tag Manager for non-logged in users who have not signed your consent. That's, I don't think that's what GDPR means. Correct. But that was the way their lawyer interpreted it. The other lawyer said, well, you know, as long as they gave you their email, it's totally okay. Which Probably. is not right either. So here's the thing that I think most people are confused about. You are still allowed to collect every bit of information that you have always been collecting. You just can't do it without telling them. Right. That's the difference. It's not that the data is illegal. It's not that you cannot legally collect it. You just can't collect it and not say anything about it. And you can't collect it and sell it to other people without anybody's consent. You can't sell it and, you know, you can't do any, you just can't do it without, in a vacuum. You can't do it in the shadows. That's the difference. You just have to tell people what you're doing. That's it. If they do that, you're fine. Like, you're more or less going to be okay. Again, talk to your lawyers. Don't, you know, don't, you know, I, I was married to a lawyer once, and that's about it. So, <laughs> so I got some pushback. So we're going to, you know, so we're actually going to jump into questions. Yeah, so you asked about the pushback. It's interesting to hear the difference between the pushback you got and the pushback that I got was that by revealing the specific data that we're collecting, we are we are disclosing our intellectual property of how we curate content to people. Either it's a terrible algorithm or they're just wrong. It's a fantastic algorithm. Then they're wrong. Then, then they assume that everybody else is intelligent enough to know that these three pieces of data equal this, which yeah. that answer is no. Right. Like, you know it because it's your client, and they know it because they wrote it. Nobody else does. Um, and in that case where it's like, then they need to figure that out because it doesn't matter if, it doesn't, if it's not ideal for what you're doing. Like that kind of goes back to the whole ignorance doesn't right. count anymore. It doesn't matter if it's not good for you or not what you want. Like again, they don't care about any of that. So in the event where someone, and his question was like, and this is more question but also pushback because these are the, these are the things that people actually deal with, um, is they were afraid that by disclosing what they're collecting, they're telling people what they're going to do with it, which is the law. They have to tell you what they're doing with it. Now, they don't have to say, we're going to use the weight of this and a weight of that to figure out that you want to read this. Yeah. That's not the detail they need. But you have to say, we're keeping this, we're keeping this, we're keeping this, and we're going to, and, and then say, we're going to use that to show you things to read. They don't have to say, we're going to show you during this math to show you what to read. Like, that's, right. they don't have to tell that. Right. But you have to say, this information is going to be used to do this. And as a user, I'm cool with that. It's like, tell me what you're going to do. It's like, Google I weirdly trust because I know they just want to show me the best the ad that I'm most likely to click on. Amazon wants me to buy more stuff. I do that all the time. So they show me things they think I might want to buy based on what I buy. Facebook just wants to connect the world, and I don't trust that robot dude anyway. So it's like Facebook doesn't really tell you what they want to do with it, and that's why I don't trust them. So and we're going to go to her next. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The, um, the challenge that we have that we still have not figured out fully is if someone requests to have their data removed, mm -hmm. like we keep backups of our data for a long time. There is a stipulation in the law that says you do not have to modify backups. So if by chance someone asks to delete their stuff and then you have to restore from a backup and the yeah. data is there again, yeah. you're not automatically in trouble. You should go back in and delete it again. So keep track, because you have right. to keep track of the requests that you get. And you just go back and delete it, whatever. But yeah, if, if the data's still in a backup, that is not, you're not liable for that. And I think she was next. Um, I have a question about, so, okay, so you have to be able to uh, find the information that you want to ask to be deleted and remove, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, 
the people that are making laws about the internet, some of them still think that what goes through tubes. So I don't think that the, any law that the US writes will be in any way, shape, or form good for this. Because they're coming from the idea that the corporations need data, users shouldn't care. So like, it's, it's a, it'll take a fundamental shift before any legislation in the US, is, in my own opinion, but will in happen. The in the EU, totally different. So I doubt they're going to legislate design in that capacity, other than, because again, certain stuff they left vague on purpose because they know the implementation is going to be dependent on the technology. Like, you can't have a link on a voice search. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing to click. So, you know, by doing so, it's like, yeah, you have your privacy policy. Like, there is stuff in core to uh, man. You, know, you can basically make a link and people can request. Um, so some of that stuff exists, and they're still building out. Again, because it's like, depending on what you collect and how you collect it is how you have to manage it. So there isn't a one tool for everybody, because most likely two people are not doing the same thing. So they will probably say something along the lines of it has to be, you know, either in the sitemap or a link some, you know, like on an account page. Like, I don't think you have to put it, like, right dead center. But yeah, you probably just, as long as it's accessible. Like I don't think you, as long as you don't bury and, and specifically hide it. And that's the other thing we don't know yet if people will actually care. We have no idea. It's only been about a year. Most people in the U.S. don't understand it anyway. Um, so I don't know how many people are going to start caring. But I, my guess would be as these things keep happening, breaches and, and more stuff like that, people are going to want to know. Like once they start, it's like once they realize they can get it from one person, they're going to want it from everybody. Because like, oh, this is data about me. I want to know. And they go get everything. So yeah, it just has to be accessible, um, both in the literal sense and the, you know, the accessibility sense. So they, they have not been specific about what you need to have on your site in terms of like prompts or things like that. Because again, not knowing anything about it could be a single page app. It could be you know, a full, a full WordPress CMS build. It could be a thing, you know, who knows what. So yeah, privacy policy, absolute bare minimum. Like if you don't have privacy policy, just turn off your website um, until you do. There's a link now in core, hit a button, it'll be there. Um, that's fine, and then they get, explain what's going on and be like, you know, you're, you know, because again, you very well may not be collecting, you may not be holding much information. Like I have clients that never turned on comments to begin with, because they didn't want comments, which I totally agree with. Um, so they were not actually collecting anybody's data. It was going to analytics, it was doing that stuff. So they were, they, in that case, they were a processor because they were, sorry, they were a controller because they were taking the data and passing it on. They were not doing anything with it. They were not holding it. They were not storing it. They passed it on. So all you had to say is basically like, we use Google Analytics. That's more or less the equivalent of what you have to say. Yeah, again, like they've not said you have to have this link or this page because most people writing those laws don't understand that stuff anyway. But unlike the US, the EU, they knew that they didn't understand it. So they wrote it to where it would cover things and they actually brought in experts. Like they brought in a whole bunch of people to make sure that this thing was actually written for technology and not for 30 years ago. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, they're still, again, they're still working through a lot of it because they're figuring, you know, we're still figuring out what we have. Like, I don't think we still know the landscape in terms of like how much data people have and what they have. Because like when I went over those breaches, Target may have information on me, but it probably is my name and email. Equifax has everything I've ever done. That's a bigger breach. Even if it was less people, it's a much bigger breach. So, exactly, so it's like depending on the data you're holding is what the problem theoretically could be. Because it's like, if I get, you know, if someone steals email addresses, I don't think anybody's gonna really care. Um, but yeah, credit card, like you should never store credit card information. But, um, you know, as soon as it gets, I, you know, stuff like that, like I don't want anybody's social security number. I, don't, I want the absolute minimum of anybody else that is on my site as I possibly can have, period. Because that's the least amount of liability. It's that easy. And then one person I did talk to, they got on, because they're based in the EU, so they, they got ready for this like two years ago. Um, he was actually saying their marketing data is better because it's so succinct and clean. Oh, interesting. Because like, we know where it's coming from. We can validate that it's real. It's not just a dummy sign up to get something. Like, they can actually, it's real data. That they can act, they've been able to do actionable things with because they can look at it and they know the source. They know that it's clean. They know that it's valid information that they collected the proper way. It wasn't just a dump of stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah. So as I said, look, the U.S. will eventually adopt something similar, and California will be the one to lead the way because um, they're the only ones that really understand technology. Um, like they have actual programmers who have become senators in California, so like they actually sort of understand it. Um, given everything else going on in California, I don't know when they'll get around to it. Um, it's been in the news. It very well could. And again, it's like one of those where, how do you apply a state law across the country where servers are located? Like their redundancy in seven states. Which law do you apply? So they'll do it. I'm not. I think it'll probably only apply to companies that are like in Silicon Valley or in San Francisco and, and that sort of stuff because that's the only ones they can really enforce. But we'll see. Um, they may write it so it will get adopted federal, you know, at the national level, which again would be great. I, I like this law. I'll say that now. I actually like this law because I don't like the idea that everybody knows way more about me than I do. Like, they have so much information on me, they probably know what I'm going to do before I'm going to do it. And well, they know when your birthday is. Well, yeah. <laughs> so does my mom. Actually, no, she got that wrong once, too. Yeah, imagine waking up to your uh, text message from your mother seven days before your birthday. Oh, sorry, no, nine, because it wasn't even the right calendar day. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, just, yeah, don't, don't, just don't store it. And if you need it, say, you know, it's like, it's very, very, ba it's like the things we tell toddlers. If you're going to take something, ask. If you're going to do something, tell me. If you're leaving, tell me when you're coming back. <laughs> you know, it's like all the things you say to kids and toddlers is basically how you approach GDPR. Like, don't do anything just because you want to and you don't say anything about it. Like, that's how you get in trouble. And... Uh, in terms of accessibility, I guess it would really come into which, you know, how you're displaying it. Yeah, like don't don't hide it. Um, again, it's usually like yeah, you know, like the thing where like we use cookies and hit OK. Like that's that's more or less enough for a lot of things. Like again, if you're not really doing anything with anybody's data, that's probably enough. Again, not a lawyer. So what I would say is, um, from my conversations with folks on the accessibility team and, and one or two people that are actually blind, screen readers are incredibly varied from one to the other. They don't work the same. So I don't know how a notice would show because I don't even know what screen reader it would be. I would probably say don't get too fancy with your JavaScript and animations and just make it a button. Like Make it something dead simple because people are just going to click it to make it go away. And so wherever it needs to be in terms of, you know, because accessibility, again, that's a whole, you know, team of people, much less a topic. So it would be like, yeah, if anything, test it. Like most anything else, test it. Because all that stuff is usually pretty available. Question? Well, I was just going to add, uh, like, I, I, I don't work with screen readers a lot, but I, what are you talking about? Uh, like, how do they deal with the... Uh, you guys can talk about it. If you want to jump on that later, that's cool. Yeah, it's just like one of the they like, follow up. Yeah, like, usually they'll outline, and the screen readers will say, "Don't do this or don't do that." And there's one or two that are very popular, and then a couple obscure ones. So it's like, yeah, I don't account for the Opera browser anymore. Sorry, um, I don't have time. So it's like, yeah, there may be a screen reader somewhere that may not read it right, but it's some obscure one that somebody built or whatever. But the main ones tell you what to do. Like if you follow good markup, you shouldn't have much of a problem. And I say that as someone who can see. Yeah, so one of the first examples of this I actually saw was, I think H&M, or, or one of the retailers that's based per, uh, predominantly in Europe that also has some stores in the US. That's where you'll start to see this stuff first. People that are based in the EU but do business in the US, they implement it because they have to. So they had one where it's like, I want to hear things about category one. I want to hear things about category two. Um, so they would individually opt in. So you can break that down as detailed as you want, as like, how, like Obviously, more options you give people, the less likely they'll do something. Balance that out. But yeah, you can say this, but not this. And as long as you've built whatever you're doing, that you can work with this and not have this, then you're fine. So yeah, certain cookie stuff that doesn't work if other pieces aren't there. So just make sure you don't let people opt into half, because then it, won't, it just won't work. <laughs> so this is more of an observation, but also a question. 
question. So there's the people in, that are not in this room mm -hmm. that need to know about this, but <laughs> are not knowing about it because they've elected not to do this. How do we get this conversation to where we're having this with the entire community and it's not just a select group of developers here sitting in the room talking about GDPR? First person to get fined? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, how many things do we not do anything about until there's a very large penalty in front of us? That will probably be what it takes for certain people to implement it here. It does, they, can listen to, they can listen to talks from everybody. They can, listen, you know, they can do everything. You know, they have lawyers to do it. And they're like, find me. Have there been any US companies other than Google that have been hit by this? Um, they recently, because it's only been in place for a year, they only started finding people like around the beginning of 2019. There was a handful that were uh, announced like two weeks ago, and I didn't get a chance to dig up the details, so I didn't put them in here. But I don't, they, they find companies that probably do business. I don't think they find a US company other than Google yet. They're going to find Facebook. They're probably going to find Twitter and, and uh, Amazon as well. If I were betting, I would say at least one of those. And we got time for, I think, like one more, or one or two more. Um, once this got launched, a lot big ecosystem of you know, privacy policies as a service. Mm -hmm. right? Have you any experience with any of those? Ones that, any experience or recommendations as far as those, some bad ones? No, only because the, the people, you know, since this, I, I work for Liquid Web, so like I've not done detailed client stuff sure. since this has been enacted. Yeah. However, the clients that care, like, go talk to your lawyer. Right. Like, get a lawyer, because if something goes wrong, they're going to be the one defending you. Um, and then, but yeah, go through with it. Because again, there's been so much now written on this that it's probably a lot clearer for attorneys. Because, and also, they, now that there have been fines, they know where to go. All right, well, this is a line. We don't want to go to this line. They work backwards. That's what they. That's what I do. That's what probably they do. Um, so, they're. It's in the news. Like you'll keep seeing them, and it'll. Pro you know, it's hard. Okay, most people don't care. So it's like you hear about it, and then you don't hear about it because again, most people don't even understand what happened, much less why they should be caring about it. So you'll see it, and then every now, you know, slowly but surely, people will just do it. That's usually it's like incremental changes they don't notice, and then all of a sudden they have privacy again. Fingers crossed. Um, I, I was going to kind of follow up on that question about uh, minds and fines. Um, and, well, I know that accessibility, right? Uh, there, people are getting sued. Mm -hmm. It's happening. A lot of, and, and courts are finding in favor of the plaintiff. Um, but what a lot of companies end up doing is kind of like eating the fine or eating, you know, eating that and then just like having a little notice that's like, oh, we're working on this. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. Is like when I say fifty-seven million or fifty-seven million euro to Google is a rounding error. Um, that's not even a line item. It's a rounding error. Um, but that thirty grand for that weird social network that could have been half their cash flow. <laughs> we don't know. So do we see any other like what are the other like I guess mitigations after a fine? Or like are, is it kind of you know like it's like there... this was a question that came up previously. Is like how do I know if a site's deleted my data? And the answer is you don't. Mm -hmm. There's no way to verify it. There's no one has figured out a way to, like, you, I can't look in your database. That, that would be a security problem. So it's like, yeah, with Facebook, like, yeah, they didn't delete it, clearly. Um, and so, yeah, they've not gone anything after follow-up to finds, in part because, like, with Google, it's like, well, what they find them on? Being Google. What do you do? Well, you, you're Google. You can't just not be Google anymore. Um, so a lot of companies have been implementing stuff behind the scenes because, again, a lot of this is back-end work that nobody cares about. Um, you may have gotten a bunch of emails in the last year asking you to re-sign up for mailing lists that you're already on. A lot of people did that. They're like, look. Great opportunity to clutter my inbox. And I was going to say, like, I was glad they did it because there are some that I kept. Like the Lego VIP one, I get that, and I probably buy some 80% of the time they email me. Um, <laughs> but I got rid of a whole slew of others that I'd forgot that I even had. Again, because it's like I was reminded of what I had signed up for 15 years ago when I got an email saying, do you still want this? Right. I was like, I've, I've gone 10 years without that. I'm probably, probably good. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, there's going to be a lot of backfill. And there's still, I mean, once they find somebody where it impacts not just the company, and I don't know what that would be. Like, I don't know how that impact, where it's like they have to shut something down, they have to turn off a feature that people care about. Like, that may influence things. But at this point, I'm straight up speculating how, how they'll deal with it. Because they, they don't know yet. But the, the difference, again, the difference is the EU knows that they don't know that yet. So they're not trying 
to go around it. They're like, yeah, we'll figure that out, but like right now we're making sure we can cover everything that can go wrong before we figure out how to deal with someone after we find them. So, and I imagine that they'll probably just keep finding them because that's really the only thing they can do. Maybe if it's really bad, they can shut down their server, but then you would just move it to a country that wasn't there and solve the problem. So like, yeah, I don't know. Like some of the enforcement stuff's gonna be really weird. It's gonna be scattered because the country itself does it, not the EU as a whole. So like France decided to do this. Germany can turn around and do the same thing. Every single country in the EU could find Google a percentage of money, all right, and the number, I think the limit is 10% of revenue is what you're allowed to find a company. Oh yeah, they could find way more than they do. Giant numbers, like they made the number big enough to matter. And, but I think they're just not starting at that number, but I would not be surprised if they went to one of those companies and implemented like that level of fine just to get the point across. Because after a while, when you have that many zeros in your account, you don't notice until there's that many zeros in a fine. So. Like, they're gonna do it. Like, they're waiting, like, they're chomping at the bit. Like, the EU doesn't like Google and Facebook anyway. So they're going, they're encouraged to do this. So, especially with every, yeah, all the election stuff that's happened where all the misinformation and, and again, nothing political at this point. That kind of stuff falls into it because like now, who, they didn't know who was putting these ads up. Like, you could go on Facebook and say, I wanna look at men in their 40s who are, live in areas that are predominantly white and seem to like white supremacy. That was a button you could click at one point. Like what groups they were involved in. You could target that kind of stuff. Like that's creepy because I don't know the data they have on me. I don't know how Facebook can target me and Google can target me. I just know that they do. But now at least in the EU, you can legally say, what are you using to target me? And it's like, if I know, I feel better about it. Like that's the weird thing. It's like, it's, I don't even have a problem with them tracking me to a degree. It's that I just don't know what's being tracked. It's like I'm in the dark about it. And that's what I don't like. And most people, like, they don't, they don't know what they don't know, so they don't think about it. They're like, oh, cool, Facebook. I look at pictures of dogs and kids. Um, but regular people start caring when, like, yeah, their bank account gets hit. So it's going to be money in some way, shape, or form of what make people change. So I think that's good. So we're going to go ahead and just get out of here. And I believe lunch is happening. <laughs> so. He was the smarter of the two. That's the worst thing. He was my he was the governor of my state for a while.